Good morning, folks. We've got a space weather note, a satellite issue that almost took out Integral, and I just can't help myself. Climate battle continues at the end. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star very quiet. The most minor motions only come with a total dearth of flaring. You can see the dark coronal holes turning towards the limb as well. Their solar wind is on its way. The stream should arrive in the next 36 to 48 hours and spark low-level geomagnetic unrest. We'll be watching the bright arches incoming on the south as well, in case there is additional sunspot production within the active region. Folks, a word on NASA's phantom CME on the Enlil Spiral, and many of your fears that, quote, they want to yank the power and will blame this event. Well, it's a tiny CME. Can't blame anything on this. If they are trying to pull something, I'd imagine NOAA's Enlil Spiral, which is the official one rather than that old model, would show it too, don't you think? And lastly, I mentioned this happened numerous times last sunspot cycle, and it did. It is what I said it is, a non-human computer model, and it makes mistakes. Over the next couple of days, we will indeed see an enhancement of the solar wind, but it's going to be from those coronal hole streams. Transitioning with seismicity, another six-pointer strikes Greece, and luckily it was offshore, but that is a lot of activity here in the last two months, and we're off to integral. Folks, they almost lost the Deep Space Energy satellite last month when an unusual event upset was caused by charged particles overtaking one of the wheels that stabilized the craft. The article is an excellent explanation of the event and their fix, but with a huge error. Folks, forgive me for this honesty. The ESA space weather team makes 10 times the mistakes of NASA and NOAA combined. It's amazing. And they're blaming radiation belt electrons over the sun because they say there wasn't space weather that day ignores the phi angle flip. We got hit with the sector boundary of the solar wind current sheet, and it did trigger geomagnetic unrest, an ion surge coupling between the magnetic field and the ionosphere. Space weather was to blame. Now last but not least, I'd like to kick off a bit of a bonanza at the end with NASA's latest Ice Facts article. Five lovely facts starting with the decline of sea ice, the trend. Up next, the albedo processes of the ice which basically stop Heinrich events from happening every single summer, and how the ice affects subsurface biology, how melting it does not contribute to sea level rise, and they are poised to keep a close watch on the ice. Really, those are the five facts. Well, let me add one more. And it was the subject of one of the videos in our climate playlist. Folks, paper after paper the last couple of years, comes out saying the extreme loss of sea ice at the polar region triggers cooling of the planet through ocean shutdowns and the heat transport and overturning circulation. Three of the most important journals on Earth carried the story and confirmed the pattern just since 2020. And of course, just a couple days ago we got the latest confirmation. The dansgaard oeschger events, the most rapid warmings on the planet, trigger Heinrich events and major cold snaps in mid and high latitude. Don't forget, the next Heinrich event is underway, with the last thick sea ice beginning to destabilize. And also don't forget, the only major Beaufort Gyre study this year, which looked at the record release before, noted that it's still holding what is the greatest cold climate bomb the Gyre has ever seen. It's all going to come at once. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.